The investigators are quickly zeroing in on whether or not there is a systemic mechanical issue with these engines, which are really the workhorse of the 737s. The NTSB suspects that metal fatigue likely was the cause for this engine failing yesterday. The fan blade came off. That's when the engine it basically had its uncontained failure, and you saw debris fly out of that engine, one of those pieces then shattering a window. The CFM-56 engine is built by GE and its French counterpart, Safran. GE did issue a service bulletin on these particular engines back in June of last year. And remember, in 2016, there was a similar type of accident, though nobody is saying that it's exactly what happened in this case. As you take a look at shares of General Electric, keep in mind that this is... Um, an engine that more than 300 airlines around the world are using. The CFM 56, again, it is the workhorse of the 737. Also take a look at shares of Southwest. It has announced already that it is accelerating engine inspections in light of this accident. We've also heard from other airlines. United today on its conference call saying that it will increase inspections of these engines. American has already been doing this following the service bulletin that was issued last year. Delta says that it will be in compliance with any changes that are instituted by regulators. So guys, they are quickly zeroing in on whether or not there needs to be further inspections and another airworthiness directive or an airworthiness directive issued for this particular engine. It sounds like, Phil, that they're really focused, though, on the older uh, planes. I mean, it, it, I would think that it'd be almost impossible to it, do those it has of, to do. It yeah, has to do with the number of cycles mm -hmm. in, in the engine and how many of those cycles have taken place since the last inspection that took place. Remember, when they do this, it's not just like looking in there and saying, well, it looks like everything's okay to me. They do an ultrasonic inspection of a number of the fan blades, and that gives them a sense of the health of the metal in those fan blades. And so that's what many people are saying. Look, when the NTSB gives us an update this afternoon, will they come out and say, look, there should have been more inspections of this particular engine? All right, Phil, stay with us. Uh, CFM 56 powered planes like that Southwest flight take off somewhere in the world every two seconds. So with those odds, just how safe is air travel right now, given that these engines are truly a mainstay of modern commercial aviation? Insight now from former NTSB member John Golia. Mr. Golia, welcome to Power Lunch. How common are Thank or you. really rare are engine failures, failures generally, and how much more common do they become as those engines age? Well, first off, with the modern generation engines, engine failures are really rare. Like the, especially like this uncontained failures. Uh, you know, the last one was two years ago, and that's, you know, I don't know, do the math, a couple of million hours of flight hours ago. So the engines today are unbelievably reliable. They just, they're just built with the best materials, and they just, I wish my car could run as far as, as fast as, or uh, as do, reliable as the jet engines. Do they engines. become much more common by a factor of X uh, as the engine passes 10 years in service, 15 years in service, whatever it is? No, because of the required inspections that are on them during teardowns, they really get a good looking at. So it's, it's uh, they're just, I can't, I can't explain how reliable they are. They're data driven. Everything that's done on an engine is data driven. So what we're now seeing is there's some data to indicate that we may have fatigue issues with the fan blades. All right, and now they're going to dig into it. This isn't new. They've been looking at it for a while and uh, just didn't have a good handle on it. Apparently, uh, what they found on the scene in Philadelphia has given them a good indication that it was fatigue. You know, the uh, NTSB investigator, the engine investigator that's there, is a very, very capable individual, and I'm sure that he is going to look at this with great detail and maybe shed some new light on it. Sir, when uh, I heard the Phil Lebeau's report, so tell me if I'm crazy, I heard his report and I thought, gee, the next time I fly, I'm going to check to see if it's a 737 and if it's got an engine, a CFM 56, and I'm going to wonder about it. Should I not do that? You should not do that. I'm flying Friday morning on one. I fly on them every day. That airplane, there's, there's many thousands of them in service. They are, like I said, in the, in the lead in, uh, does it take off every two seconds with this engine on it? This engine is unbelievably reliable, unbelievably. So I'm, I'm not the least bit concerned about getting on an airplane with a CFM engine on it. And it's not just the 737, by Phil the way. Phil LeBeau has a question uh, for you. 
John, sure. this is Phil LeBeau. I I'm curious, can you walk us through what the process is for an airworthiness directive to be issued? Because people are going to be looking at this situation and saying, well, it was proposed last year, but one was never officially ordered and made mandatory. What, what is that process in Washington so that airlines are told, look, you must inspect these engines? All right, so normally, normally the manufacturer will put out a service bulletin that has a recommended practice in it. And uh, most operators comply with that recommended practice. But if they have a continued occurrences, like we had now one repeat from that, when that happened, you're gonna find that the FAA is gonna say, make it mandatory. Uh, we don't have any indication yet that Southwest Airlines complied or did not comply with this. My gut tells me that Southwest Airlines complied with that service bulletin. So the AD would be a little bit redundant on their part. But the FAA also has to worry about all the other 20,000 or so engines that are out there, not just Southwest. So they're requiring everybody to take a look uh, at this part. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.